Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. And a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the Roadcaster Pro and I talked about how it was just not appropriate for streamers. But since then, uh, Rode has released a bunch of updates and they have been doing the best that they can to fix the issues. And I think it's now time to talk about the things that they did and where it currently stands with streamers. So let's get into it. A very quick recap of that last video, or I'll make sure to link it in the description down below if you want to check it out. But uh, basically the Roadcaster Pro, when it was initially launched, it had issues with channels being able to hear each other. Uh, MixMine is not enabled on all of the USB channels and just basically you really couldn't use it for gaming or streaming. For example, you know, you, you could be playing a game, talking to your friends on Discord and your Discord buddies would be able to hear game sounds because all the channels, you know, can hear each other and that's just not acceptable, right? That's, there's no way you can game like that. So it was very clear that they had to push out some kind of update to fix that. And one of the most requested features was a full routing table to be able to selectively choose the channels that you want to be able to feed to the different different channels and, and the different sources. So that was almost a requirement. Now Rode has claimed and, and from the very get go that they are watching watching for feedback and they are very responsive about uh, you know incorporating feedback into their future feature updates. And indeed, they have been very active because since putting out that video, 1.0.4 update came out, 1.0.5, and now today, 1.0.6 beta is out. So they've, they've been definitely adding a lot of features. Now, there's one thing I wanna show you is how to enable the beta channel on the Roadcaster Pro and talk about some of the updates that we have been getting in the 0.5 and 0.6 updates. So, First up, the beta channel. If you didn't know already, you can either have the official firmware, the release version, or you can have the beta version. And to do that, it can be all done from the device itself. Now, all you need to do is to go over to the menu and go under system, and under information, there's a tab called view device information. And according to the literature, all you need to do is to push or tap the screen 10 times and it will flip the RCP2 into developer mode. Uh, and then you'll see the interface that I'm seeing right here, beta mode, and then it'll give you the mixer beta mixer build and the GUI build. So it'll give you a little bit more information. From there, go back to settings, or uh, you should be able to see the software update. Um, if, if there's a newer version, newer beta version available, you should be able to see that. And, or you can go back to system, information and check for updates. And once you do that, it will search for an update. It will show you that there is an update. Go ahead and download that. The system will reset by itself. Um, and once that is done, you should be on the latest beta. Once you start downloading the firmware, you can actually go and scan the QR code and it will bring up a website of the release notes. I know some people were saying, I can't find, I don't know what the updates are. Well, if you go to that website, it will tell you all the new features, all the improvements, and all the bug fixes that they are putting into these uh, release or updates in the firmware. And let's actually go back to 1.0.5 because this one was a very, very important one because they took all of the gamer streamer feedback and incorporated that into a routing table. And this is actually a very quick turnaround time because unless they were doing it in the background, uh, which I don't think at least it didn't seem like they were doing it in the background. It seemed like they, they released it and then realized, oh crap, we've, we probably forgot about this. So uh, it appears that the turnaround has been pretty quick in a couple of weeks. But um, the new feature with the routing table that we requested, if you go under, uh, what is it, system? No, not system, uh, outputs. And then top right hand corner, there is routing. And under that menu, you have your USB, main one, USB chat one, and then USB two, and that as well as Bluetooth. So you can have four access to change the routing tables of four different inputs. If you go over to the custom tab, 
you'll have access to all of your different channels, your full, up to four microphone inputs. I currently have microphone three and four disabled because I just don't use them. I'm you know, getting rid of the clutter here. So currently you can see that I've got microphone one, two, USB one, chat one, USB two, and my sound pads all on the routing, custom routing table. So for USB one, which is connected to my computer, all I want is the output from the computer sounds. I don't want any of the other sounds. I don't want a microphone sound, you know, any of that. So that's USB main one is just computer sounds, computer systems main sounds. Tab it over to the next tab here, which is, which is chat one. Uh, and here I have it configured for main mic in or main mic out. So that's the mic that I'm talking talking out of that's the sm7b and that's what i route to through my discord and then i've also got the smart pads uh, output so um what that means is if i were to hit that on the rcp2 people in my discord channel can actually hear those sounds so that, that's kind of nice to be able to route that sound through discord because i don't really stream i'm just mainly gaming and using discord and, and doing that stuff. So having smart paths going through Discord, you know, you can have some kind of fun, right? So that's how I've got it set up here. Uh, USB 2, I don't have use at the moment, but if I were to run another cable from the computer into USB 2, I can set the channel of, let's say, music, right? If I have iTunes or Spotify or whatever, I can set it and feed it through USB 2 into the RCB2 and then use it as a, you know, controlled by the fader, controlled music, that specific channel of music with the faders, that's completely doable now. And I'm able to select the different, um, you know, mute all the other ones and only have USB2 come through. So the rounding table is great. Uh, and you'll see that it actually applies to Bluetooth as well. If you flip Bluetooth to custom, um, you could change that as well. So this routing table is exactly what we needed from the very get go. Uh, it took two, us two weeks to get there, but the implementation is good and it works. So no more complaints from the routing table. Um, and really this device is finally usable for games and streamers. It's not completely feature rich yet, but it's doable. And, you know, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm, go I'm going back and saying that it's this, this device is now appropriate for streamers. It's not perfect though. It's still not perfect because I do want one more feature that um, I, I think is really important, but it's just not there yet for this device, which is being able to control output and having a routing table for the output. Meaning I want that routing table, I want it to have control for the output. So if I were to go under outputs, for example, and go under monitor, I wanna be able to choose which channels I want to be able to go to my speakers and which channels to go to my headphones. For example, um, I want to be able to hear myself at live uh, audio monitoring from my microphone and my headphones. But if I am choosing to use speakers, I don't want to hear myself through my speakers and have that go through the microphone. So, you know, to be able to change the inputs and outputs that's going to the speakers, going to the headphones, that is the next step. Currently they have the auto muting when the faders are turned off for the speakers. That's really not useful if you're planning on using speakers for your computer. I'm sure it's a great podcasting, whatever setup to have that feature, but for the, for the PC, it's basically useless, that auto muting feature. So if Rode, if you're watching this, please, please, please add that as a feature. Uh, that is basically my last requirement for the RCB2 to be perfect. Uh, everything, all the other features on top of that, that you, you know, release down the road, that's icing on the cake for me. So I'm really happy with where we're go, what we've done in the last two weeks, just a little bit more and it'll be perfect. Other things that they uh, released in the 1.0.5 beta or not beta, I guess 1.0.5 has now been officially released. Um, is the ability to press and hold rotary encoder to mute selected virtual fader. That's a new feature. Another new feature is the access monitor and Bluetooth output level control and recording playback screen. 
And then the last one is the ability to switch UFP one main between multi-track and stereo. Uh, you know, I, I guess those are new features. There's a bunch of bug fixes and new improvements with the with the fader you know indicator when it's zero and, and whatnot so i'm not going to bore you guys with that now moving on to 1.0.6 beta that came out today what's important at least to me about the 1.0.6 beta is the ability to power press the power button twice to power down the device so um the power button on the back here is is a very squishy, very difficult to use power button, and it's a it's a momentary button. So you got to push it, or you know, and and it's not like a physical switch or anything like. Well, it is a physical switch. It's not one of those rocker switches where you just flip it and it cuts power. It's one of those you push kind of thing. So you can push it twice, and now it will be able to shut down the device. So just to show you guys here, push. Uh, there's also a couple of new features. Uh, it says pressing the rotary encoder will cycle through monitor outputs and virtual channels. So you can you know, change that through this. And then the other one is output delay is applied to USB 1 main and USB 2 when set to main mix. So those are a couple of new features. Oh, there's a bunch of bug fixes as well, but you know, that's 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 basically it for this update I, I think at least the important stuff so just in general here i'd really want to praise road for updating this so quickly you know there's this is clearly a brand new device and they're really on top of the feedback uh you know our, us on reddit on youtube they're watching these these youtube videos and they're following up on it so uh, props to road for doing that and you know, what my original assessment for the RCP2 is, it's got, is, is, is completely still valid. You know, it's got very good hardware, it's got a great build, and it's got a lot of potential. And, you know, it might not be there software-wise yet, but it looks like Rode is on top of things to be able to bring us the software updates that we've been, we've been asking for. So, um, you know, if you, if you want new toys, this is one to pick up and it's gonna be great for the foreseeable future. As always, my name is Stan and if you guys got any comments, questions about the RCP2, go ahead and comment down below. I read every comment um, and you know I'll try to respond as they come in. So if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one.